I'm glad that we're back this year after uh, missing last year. Um, and there's so much to think about after what we've been through. And it makes this even uh, more heightened for me um, when I think about um, what our veterans have done for this country. Um, I'd like to call on Jim Zioli, the first selectman, to say a few words. Good morning, everyone. And thank you for coming out for this outdoor, indoor ceremony to honor our, all of our veterans, whether they're here with us today or have gone beyond or were unable to make it today. I thank this committee that has worked hard for the entire year trying to put a event together and then to have Mother Nature literally rain on your parade and your event, Kel and committee, we're terribly sorry. I think that no matter what the weather outside, it does not dampen the spirit of the day, the week, the month, or the year. We should always remember and be in our thoughts all the veterans and what they have made possible for each and every one of us to stand here today. I'm very moved to see so many in hats here of our fire department, our police department, our American Legion, and most notably up in front, Al Pohl is with us in spirit today. Michael, good to see you. Glad you're here wearing his jacket and carrying his hat. He was one of our honored for many years who led this parade, and he's with us today. Thank you. What, uh, where's uh, Mark? Is Mark here? Yeah, your committee. Where is he? He's over the, no? Mark? He's hiding. Oh, there you are. Mark, this is something you asked earlier, and this is something that were given out by the town of Orange to the veterans of a previous war. And there used to be a panel that surrounded the flagpole up at the green. And uh, Congresswoman Deloro, welcome. Come on up. That's quite all right. Glad to see you made it out. No. <laughs> but, so the town of Orange has a long history in honoring its veterans and those that have served to protect our town, our state, and our country. I've had this medal for quite a long time, and I carry it with me quite often. And it's something to remind that our veterans were here and have done and made it possible for me to hold office, others to hold office, and others to live a great life in our town. Service, and I wish you safety today and every day because of their service. There's a very interesting photo circulating today out there of burial at sea, of members being dropped off the intrepid that had passed. And uh, when I've never seen that photo before. And it shows many unfortunate souls in canvas bags going over board and to the ocean. And if you see that picture, it makes you think of many that we don't think about on a regular basis, and maybe we should. So I thank all of you for coming out today. I thank our committee for putting up with Mother Nature. I congratulate our three honored gentlemen here who I know well and have all given back to this community in many, many ways. Um, 
I think that uh, Lou, Kevin, and Norman have each been part of our community for many years and gifted this community. So their service didn't stop when they served our country. Their service has continued right up until this day. Each and every one of them contribute to our community and beyond. So thank you, gentlemen, for all that you've done and continue to do for us. And all of our honored guests, yes, absolutely. And all of our honored guests and elected officials and all that have joined us here today, thank you for each making the time to be with us. We truly appreciate all of your efforts. Thank you. Our first honored guest today is Dr. Norman J. Mary, um, was in the uh, military branch of the Navy from 1961 to 63. Decided to join the military during the medical school at the University of Rochester. An option at the time was the Berry Plan, which allowed him to defer active duty. But he received his MD and completed two years of residency at Barnes Hospital before entering the United States Navy Medical Corps as lieutenant. His assignment was with the U.S. Marine Corps from 61 to 63. Upon discharge, he was a fellow in endocrinology at Yale Navin Hospital, which included rotations in the Veterans Hospital. Served in the Naval Reserves until 1965, and his professional life included private medical practice, Department of Medicine Chair at the Hospital of St. Rayfield's, Chief Operating Officer at the Hospital of St. Rayfield's, Professor of Medicine at Yale University, consultant at Gaylord Hospital, and quality assurance consultant at Milford Hospital. He also had civic positions in Orange, chairman of the Board of Education, Conservation Board, Board of Health. After discharge from the military, resided in Orange with his wife and five children. Dr. Mary. Well, good morning. Good morning. Thanks for all of you showing up today. It's amazing. Um, as I as mentioned, I was a lieutenant in the Navy Medical Corps, but stationed with a group of Marines in the Mojave Desert. Um, a few weeks ago, I was notified of three veterans being honored here this morning, and I was to be one of them. And that certainly made me so proud to be among this group. I wonder how many of us, with a little time on our hands, actually think about why we're here. How we made it this far, how we survived. And I think that's very important to think about that of all the heroes that have passed before us. Um, you might ask, why are we here? And I've thought about this a lot. And I looked at all the vaccines that we've had, polio being treated. Now we have um, COVID-19 also being treated. We've had the treatment of AIDS. There are 38 million people in this country currently living with AIDS. Uh, so the question is, We've been very fortunate because of the vaccines for polio, as mentioned, uh, and we're, we've been, we're very fortunate, of course, for discovery of penicillin. Another outstanding reason why we're here is our country has not been assaulted except for twice in the last 50 to 60 to 70 years. What that means is we have set up the kind of defense to prevent being assaulted. And so 
there was Japan, of course, um, and Pearl Harbor. And of course, that was uh, the awful time that we spent um, with 9-11-2001. Since then, we have not been assaulted because of the defense and the care that everyone has and the bravery, bravery they have. Um, think for a moment about D-Day, if you would. Say you're on a landing craft, huddled in a landing craft, aiming for Omaha Beach, and not knowing that your chance of survival is less than 50%. That's the kind of bravery people in the United States have, and they care. So that would be, it was awful at D-Day, as you all know. And the reason we're here is because of those people in the defense of our nation. Decoration Day, as Memorial Day was first called, um, began soon after the Civil War. The Civil War was awful, as you know. Several of the southern states were trying to secede from the nation. President Lincoln looked at that and said, you can't divide our country. And because of that, the Civil War was fought. 620,000 people died during the Civil War. Um, following the war, grassroots uh, efforts at cemeteries around the country were really worked with. Um, so many women have helped set up what was going on at the cemeteries for us to remember why we're here. Um, today, as we assemble in Orange, we are grieving for the lives of those lost by the brave and noble men and women. And we are here to honor them. And we're all here together for that honor. Thank you very much. Next, Chief of Staff, Kevin Hadlock. Kevin, Kevin was a, a, a lieutenant in the Navy from 1971 to 74. He was commissioned Ensign, U.S. Naval Reserve, the same day um, that he graduated from Holy Cross in 1971. Went on active duty July 3rd, 1971, assigned to the USS Vesuvius the oldest ammunition ship in the U.S. Navy in September 1971. It was home ported in Concord, California. It was assigned as a first division officer with about 80 men in his division. The ship left for Vietnam in Febr on February 14, 1972 and arrived in the Subic Bay in the Philippines on March 3, 1972. And the ship was loaded with ammunition destined for Vietnam warships. During the ensuing 12 months, the ship passed nearly 30,000 tons of weapons, projectiles, bombs, and missiles to all types of naval warships while moving at 15 knots off the coast of Vietnam in a process called underway replenishment. The ship was the last of its kind in the Vietnam War and stayed until after the ceasefire was signed in January 73. It was the longest deployment of any Navy ship during the Vietnam War. The ship was decommissioned in August 1973, and um, Lieutenant Hadlock's last uh, year on active duty was at the Naval Weapons Station in Concord, California. It was honorably discharged August 31st, 1974.
Good morning, and thank you all for being here. Good morning. Good morning. My wife saw my sash falling uh, earlier, and she came up and said, you're falling apart. I said, yes, <laughs> yes I am. But uh, um, today marks the 153rd uh, Decoration Day, or Memorial Day, as we have now called it for the last uh, 60 years or so. But it began in 1868 when graves of war dead were decorated with flowers and U.S. flags. And uh, there were a number of fewer uh, stars on the flag back then. There were 37 states in the Union at the time. Uh, but we have grown as a nation, and growing has also encumbered us with participation in additional conflicts since that first Decoration Day. Uh, we are here today as a nation to recognize and to honor all of those who have not only participated, but have given the fullest measure of their devotion to their country by sacrificing their lives during combat. And that is really what Memorial Day is all about. So I want to thank each of you for being here and participating in this time-honored holiday to honor those who have uh, been killed in combat, fighting for our freedom and our liberty here in the United States of America. Thanks very much. Next is Lewis Abram Eagle, was a rank, a spec four rank in the military branch of the Army from 1960 to 63. Joined the Army at 20 years old, stationed at um, Seven Corps headquarters in Stuttgart, Kelly Barracks, Germany. Had a secret clearance for his work and received a sharpshooter medal and a bond discharge, a good conduct medal. Mr. Eagle. Well, I feel very honored, and I don't really feel that I deserve this, but uh, during the Vietnam War, it was very common to hear, love it or leave it. I love this country, and I feel very honored that I was born here in Philadelphia, of all places. Hey, um, my father, I'm first generation. My father came over from Vilna, and when he was nine years old, at 15, he joined the Navy, and he served, uh, he served in the First World War. Uh, and uh, he instilled upon me that it was very important in life to honor the country and respect the flag, and, uh, and uh, that's who he was. Uh, Thank you very much for this honor. Um, we have a, a bunch of guests here today. Uh, U.S. Senator Richard Blumenthal is here. Um, uh, Themis Claritas is here. Mitch Goldblatt. Um, and other persons who are in, uh, you know, who you would know and whose names escape me at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> Does anyone of the people who I just announced want to speak, have anything to say? Okay, that's good. <laughs> um, I'm next going to call on Christopher Car. Oh. You want to speak? <laughs> you guys know who this is. Uh, 
thank you. I, I would just mention as one of the forgotten names, I'm happy to be here uh, with all of you uh, 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 today and apologize for being late. I didn't know it had been moved indoors, but what a, this is wonderful uh, in order that we can really, um, uh, really remember. It's not a celebration, it's a remembrance of what today is all about. So it is so much of an honor to be with all of you uh, today. Um, and I would just like to join uh, First Electman Zioli, uh, thanking uh, him, uh, thanking all those who worked so hard uh, to bring about the ceremony. And a special thanks, obviously, to Lou, to Kevin, and to Norman um, uh, for their service, and to all here, uh, for those who have served. You know, it is each year on Memorial Day, uh, we pause to remember those who lost their lives in serving the United States in our armed forces. Our ceremonies and our traditions take a different form again this year as we recover from the pandemic and we begin to reopen our country. But nonetheless, we honor the lives taken from us and the loved ones who have been left behind. Again and again, our service members have answered the call and our call to duty to defend our freedom, our nation, whether it's been in Iraq or Afghanistan, Vietnam, Korea, Lexington and Concord during the War of Independence and through two world wars. And it is because of their courage and their bravery, that willingness to fight and to even die, that our republic is standing strong today as has been mentioned. I have had the opportunity to visit Normandy and to see the row on row of white crosses to honor the dead and American lives lost there as well. And one of the most significant things for me on that visit was looking up at the, the cliffs of the cliffs and you had to think about those young men because they faked their ages in that war. They were 17 or 18 years old and when you look up where the bunker was at the top and they were scaling the cliffs exposed and with the shots raining down on them. And you get a sense of the courage of those young men who were there. And I was there at a time with President Obama and he was recognizing the Normandy uh, invasion. And he said they left his boys and they came back as men. What an extraordinary experience. And for those who, from a distance, watch it, and we should know and understand the history of that bravery um, and that valor. I've had the opportunity to be in Vietnam, north and south, to be in the Coochie Tunnels, when you just get a sense of the brutality of that war and how men went through that experience in those tunnels and the cruelty that was applied. And again, you have to remember the courage and the valor. And I've had the opportunity to be in Afghanistan three times now. And the terrain, hard terrain, those young men and women today and how they have struggled and given their lives for this country, for freedom, for democracy. And again, we can't not just remember for a day, we need to understand the history of the men and the women who have served on our behalf. And during this deeply moving and reverential ceremony, we, re we really reflect and honor those heroes service, the heavy cost paid by those who made that ultimate sacrifice. What Lincoln called, and I quote, the last full measure of devotion. 
And just as their service never wavered, our support of them and their families must stay just as resolute and unwavering. And today, as we remember, as we share, and as we mourn, let us stand together, united in an obligation to fill the silence of those who we lost not just with our words, but with our actions. And that means listening to the stories of our gold families, gold star families. And as one former president put it, and again, and I quote, hear from those who love them about what their smile looked like, what their laugh sounded like, and the dreams they had for their lives. That is our responsibility. That is what we owe. After all, these are the sentiments that have guided our nation through the hardest times and helped America carry on, even with the heaviest of hearts. It has been said that a nation that forgets its defenders will be itself forgotten. So for those who we have asked everything of, who embody the best of America, let us repay them with the only thing that they ask of us, and that is to remember them. Today and every day, and I just say this as a daughter of a veteran, let us take up their cause to our country, our democracy, to freedom and opportunity, and to each other. That was their mission, and now, more than ever, we must make it our own. Thank you for including me. Senator Go, Senator Blumenthal. Thank you so much. Uh, nobody goes before Rosa Delore in the state of Connecticut. <laughs> and uh, it's always hard to follow her. Thank you, Rosa, for being here today. And thank all of you. Thank you to the town of Orange for going ahead with this ceremony, for reminding us what is important about Memorial Day. There are a lot of folks at the malls. They may be having family at home, which is great, but you're here reminding us what is really important about this holiday. And I'd like to ask all of the veterans who are here today to please raise your hand, whatever your service, please raise your hand so we can thank you for your service to our nation. Today, today is about honoring the fallen, the warriors who have given all, who have made a sacrifice that none of them wanted to make, but every veteran stands ready to do it when they raise their hand and they enter the service. So we thank every one of you. And we owe you that thanks not only in word, but in deed. And we ought to dedicate ourselves on this day and every day to providing our veterans with the educational benefits, the jobs, the training, everything we promise them, and especially the health care. We're very fortunate to have a great VA facility in the state of Connecticut, in West Haven, and in Newington, and we can make it even better. And that ought to be our pledge today. And finally, let me just say to all of you that I am so humbled and grateful to be in the presence of these three great veterans. As Lou said, today is really about honoring our country and respecting the flag. Honor the country, respect the flag. I don't think anyone could say it any better. And I don't think any words are more eloquent than the picture of these three great men before us. Thank you to Orange for honoring them and for allowing all of us to really honor Memorial Day. Thank you so much.
Uh, Themis Claritas would like to say a few words also. Good morning, everyone. I've been honored for many years to be part of this wonderful community. And I think this turnout today, even though we can't be outside in the sun and enjoying the fresh air, is a testament to how much of a community Orange is and how much unity there is in Orange and this great state of Connecticut. I sit here and I see our, our wonderful police and our firefighters throughout and on a day like this, we're fortunate. We get to honor three veterans who are still with us. But we're here to honor the veterans who passed. And on days like this, I'm always taken by the fact that I can stand up here as a woman and do what I do, that the good representative as a woman can stand up here and do what we do, regardless of our religion where we came from, what our gender, our nationality is. And it's men like these three men who fought for this country to allow us to be who we are, say what we think, whether we agree with it or not, and love this country. Dr. Marib, Mr. Hadlock, and Mr. Eagle, thank you for your service. Thank you for allowing us to stand here and be who we are. To police and fire and first responders, thank you for keeping us safe. We have your back. And to everyone here, Congresswoman Delora, Senator Blumenthal, First Selectman, the good representative and senator, and all of our elected officials, thank you. Thank you for keeping this community safe. Thank you for keeping this community unified. And God bless America. Our keynote speaker tonight is Christopher Carbath, and I would call on him now to speak. Thank you very much. Um, distinguished gentlemen uh, from the Armed Services, Senator Blumenthal, Representative DeLauro, First Selectman Zioli, and all our other elected officials at the state and local level, thank you very much uh, for attending and promoting uh, this great event. I'm asking all of you to join today in recognizing the sacrifice of those men and women who gave their lives in the service of this country. While today's weather is not ideal for that, it is nonetheless one where we can join together, and I appreciate the opportunity extended by me, to me by the Orange Memorial Day Committee to uh, offer a few observations, but especially with our younger guests. We probably don't have as many young people as we would have had if we were on the bandstand in the parade, but I do direct these remarks uh, primarily to them, but with an urge for you all, um, older adults like me, to make sure that you listen and teach the young, because it is so important. When I received the invitation to be the keynote speaker, I said, well, why me? I'm not a veteran. I'm not even an American citizen by birth. But this is my adopted country. I'm very proud of it. And I appreciate this opportunity to address you today. In my native Canada, we celebrate Remembrance Day the old Armistice Day on November 11th, denoting the end of the hostilities during World War I. We now observe service by all veterans of all branches on November 11th as Veterans Day, but in the Commonwealth nations, our Memorial Day is observed as Remembrance Day. We honor all who have served in, this, in these remarks, and one peril of being the last speaker is that gentlemen and ladies who have spoken have pretty much addressed everything I was going to say. But being a lawyer, guy who likes to talk, we're going to soldier on, no pun intended. I'm sure many of you today in your homes lowered your flags, put out your patriotic bunting, maybe put out some other decorations denoting this, this holiday. It's right that we do that. 
we take these simple steps so that we can explain to our children the origin of the holiday, as was noted, what we do and why we do to recognize the ultimate sacrifice that was made by so many in conflict starting at the civil war, with the Civil War and reaching today to the War on Terror in Afghanistan and still are serving troops in Iraq. Yesterday, you probably saw on the television news the preparation or perhaps even the uh, placing of over 14,000 American flags at the Connecticut Veterans Cemetery <clears throat> Excuse me, in Middletown. And that is such an important event. And it speaks to what we are as a nation and a community and a state that we recognize all veterans today, but with a special emphasis on those who have made that ultimate sacrifice. They lie in solemn glory. We do what we can to remember that sacrifice. In 2014, to mark the 70th anniversary of D-Day, Operation Overlord, the effort to liberate Europe from Nazi tyranny, my wife and I went to Normandy, as Representative Deloro spoke of, and saw firsthand the amazing solemnity of two of the American cemeteries in Europe. There are many, but the particular ones at Normandy in Colleville-sur-Mer, and also a slightly smaller but no less impressive cemetery in St. James, France, marking the Brittany campaign as the invasion proceeded further south. We were struck by the reverence of the site, which are administered by the American Battlefield Monuments Commission, and those cemeteries are actually U.S. property on foreign soil. There's always an American superintendent who works hand in hand with the host country superintendent. And more importantly, are the families that live nearby that adopt a grave, remember birthdays, remember the day that the soldier fell, and many occasions decorate their graves on holidays such as this, and also welcome the families that come to see the final resting place of their loved ones. I'm sure many of you might recall the opening scenes of Saving Private Ryan, walking among the grave, graves, looking at the crosses of his fallen brothers and sisters, and the impact that may have had on your lives. Share that with your children. Share that with your grandchildren, your nieces and your nephews, and tell them how important that small tribute is to maintaining a legacy of freedom that we own and enjoy in the United States and the allied nations thanks to their efforts. With historical hindsight, we know the terrorism that the assaulting troops faced on June 6th and later. The Americans on Omaha and Utah, the Canadians on Juno Sword, along with the British, Juno Sword and um, the Gold Beaches. And you can only imagine the terror, which was captured in Saving Private Ryan, as the landing crafts from New Orleans brought these assaulting ultimate victors onto the shores, facing the withering fire from the cliffs up above. If you ever, ever have a chance to do what Congresswoman Deloro did and we did, and go to Normandy, stand on that beach, Look at the monument, Les Braves, three winged sections on immaculately tendered sand. Look out to the English Channel, look behind you to what remains of the cliffs, <coughs> and tour around and see the various monuments that the, are there specifically to the different battalions, the engineering battalions uh, that made the capture of uh, ultimately the Normandy beaches possible. When we went to the smaller cemetery in St. James, the Brittany Cemetery, there's a beautiful memorial. We walked through the chapel. We walked among the graves. There wasn't a speck to be picked up. The superintendents, the families that have adopted graves, make sure that those fallen heroes beneath crosses, stars of David, an occasional crescent, those heroes lie in solemn glory. And if you have the chance to go there and pay your respects, I certainly hope you will do so. 
while the monuments in France are certainly uh, well known and uh, just beautiful to observe, it's also um, my honor to have uh, visited the Commonwealth Cemetery in Anzio, Italy. The Italian campaign started later in 1944, and the Commonwealth Cemetery is where several of my father's colleagues, <coughs> sorry, I was in the hospital this week and the, uh, that tube is still uh, acting on me. The, the uh, Commonwealth Cemetery is slightly different than the Americans. It's not quite as laid out if you look at them overhead, you'll see that American cemeteries are designed with a design. You can see shields, eagles. It's quite amazing. At the ground level, it looks the, the lines look straight. But when you look at it from above, you see what an amazing job our nation has done to remember our war dead. Many of my father's colleagues didn't come home from Canada or to Canada. And in the Commonwealth graves, we recognize and observe the graves of our allied nation compatriots, the New Zealanders, the Australians, British. We are in a shared battle today, a shared battle against tyranny, like what we saw in the 1940s, the shared battle against the tyranny that we saw at the beginning of the century in the Great War. And it is up to all of us to tell our children, our grandchildren, as I often do, that only we can act as the tip of the spear, as they say, to make sure that those types of conflicts do not happen again. And if we have an observation to make, which we do today, we hope that it will be one of remembrance, but not of repeat. My plea then to you parents and grandparents is to educate, commemorate, and participate. I'm sure we're all facing some internet fatigue after a year of pandemic, learning at home, working from home, but do go on the internet. Go to the American Battlefield Monument Commission site where you can take virtual tours of the cemeteries where our veterans lay in this honored glory. Cambridge in England, uh, the Dutch uh, host an amazing cemetery for the American uh, warriors who fell in Holland. And don't hesitate to reach out to me if you need a travel tip. I'll be happy to tell you which way to go and what you want to see. Thank you again for this opportunity to share with you a few moments in this amazing town that we call home. To all who have served in uniform, I salute you. To those who made the ultimate sacrifice, may God bless you and hold you and your families dear. Thank you. Um, anime player will now make a special presentation. On behalf of the Town of Orange and the Orange Memorial Day Parade Committee, we would like to present to um, Michael Paul, son of Alpha Paul, who served as our um, marshal, his father served as our marshal in the parade for many, many years. Many years of dedication, many years of proudness, even when he wasn't feeling well, he insisted on being the marshal and walking down the parade route. Um, this is the sash that he last wore in um, the last parade um, that he served as marshal. And also to Richard Manley, who also served as our marshal in the parade, who just resigned um, his position. Uh, we thank you. We thank you both for giving all the service that you gave to this Memorial Day Parade and how proud you were to serve as our marshals. Okay, I'd like to, at this time, have Patrick come up, Patrick O'Sullivan. Patrick has helped this committee for a number of years, 
and apparently is retiring, correct? <laughs> so we have... This is for the annual presentation of the Roll of Honor of Veterans Laws provided by you and your office. Thank you very much. You have been my inspiration. Thank you. All right, we now proceed to an event that you should enjoy, which is the student essay winners. Um, I'm gonna ask them to come up one by one as I call their names. Raysbrook School, Armand Shrevatov. Is that correct? Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I'm Arman Srivastav, and I am from Raysbrook School. Thank you for giving me this opportunity to read my essay, Why is Memorial Day Celebrated? Unreasoning leads to anger. Anger leads to hate. Hate leads to desire for power. Power leads to war. For war, we need soldiers. So many soldiers die serving the nation. Memorial Day is for remembering those brave soldiers who gave up their lives for their fellow citizens. Memorial Day is when we honor and remember the brave soldiers. We celebrate Memorial Day to show respect for them. We must thank these soldiers who sacrificed themselves for the country. Memorial Day is a day to bow to them. Many people celebrate this day by going to their families' graves together and hold a gathering or participate in a parade. New York is the birthplace of Memorial Day. After the Civil War, which claimed many lives, people started decorating graves with flowers. This came to be known as Decoration Day. Since then, people have started giving more importance to this day by visiting soldiers' graves every year. So the government officially announced the last Monday of May as Memorial Day. Memorial Day is celebrated on the last Monday of May. This year, Memorial Day is on 31st May. We should all honor these brave soldiers, offer flowers to them, and remember their selfless service for the nation and what they did for us. Thank you. This is the first of uh, the first of four children that we're going to honor for winning. Um, one for designing the parade. A cover and three for writing uh, about this day. And w w during one of our meetings, we decided what should we do for these kids? Should we give them a plaque? Should we get their essay uh, framed? And then we decided, you know, you know, they're just kids, maybe they wouldn't appreciate that. So we took a vote on what we would appreciate at that age, and we have a $25 gift certificate to Dip Top. <laughs> For the students that will be reading their essays today, I've just been requested by Congressman DeLauro. She would like those essays so that she can enter them in the... Congressional record. She... she so... And Senator, and Senator Blumenthal is offering the same honor to all of you who did those essays today. Next from Peck Place School is Chloe Chang. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. 
My name is Chloe Chang, and I am from Peck Place School. I'm honored to, to have this opportunity to read my essay to all of you. We dress in red, white, and blue, attend parades, and honor the men and women who have fallen in the Civil War. This holiday has been around for 152 years, and we still donate money, coupons, and flowers to the perished soldiers. Their sacrifices have allowed them to serve their country, put, putting the welfare of others before their own. How can we repay them? We can give them a mo moment of silence, visit their burial ground, and learn about their history. The holiday started in 1868 when North America was fighting to end slavery and South America was fighting to preserve slavery. The war to end slavery lasted for over four years and Robert E. Lee finally capitulated the last Confederate soldier to General Ulysses S. Grant. Decoration Day was declared by General John A. Logan in 1868. In Decoration Day, flowers were laid on war graves in honor of the diseased. Memorial Day was declared a national holiday in 1971 to honor those who have died in all American wars. The Union Army has contributed immensely to our lives, and, at le and the least we could do is say a little thank you. The invaluable changes they made upon our history is indescribable, and we are forever indebted to them. These brave men and women have done so much for their fatherland by sacrificing their own lives, and we continue to honor them on May 31st, Memorial Day. From Turkey Hill School, Avery French. Hi. My name is Avery French, and before I get started, I would just like to say I am honored to be here this Memorial Day 2021 to thank and remember our nation's heroes. I want to thank everyone for being here this morning to honor all those who have served our country. Thank you to the town officials and parade committee for organizing this ceremony. I'm sorry. He's looking I'm for sorry. the written portion of his. I'm sorry. I think it's, it's in so the beginning. Sorry. No, there it okay, is. I'm <laughs> so sorry. It's okay. <laughs> Memorial Day is a special holiday for all Americans. We celebrate and honor all the soldiers who have bravely given up their lives so we could be a free country. We honor those who fought for our country's future generations. All the soldiers who we honor today cared about more than just themselves. They thought about us and sacrificed their lives for the future of our country. Memorial Day shouldn't be confused with the similar holiday, Veterans Day. Veterans Day honors all, the, all those who have served in the armed forces, while Memorial Day honors who have died in the forces. Memorial Day was originally given the name Decorations Day, of the tradition of people decorating the graves of the country's fallen heroes. Memorial Day was officially titled a federal holiday in 1971. The tradition of honoring the fallen soldiers started the years following the Civil War. The Civil War claimed the many lives of the country's soldiers. People held tributes in the late 60s, around the time the Civil War ended, to honor the dead soldiers, leaving flowers and other decorations at their graves. While it's unclear how the tradition started, it was declared a federal it was declared a holiday by the federal government in 1966 that Waterloo, New York, was Memorial Day's official birthplace. Quote from History.com. On the first Decoration Day, General James Garfield made a speech at Arlington National Cemetery and 5,000 participants decorated the graves at 2, 000, of 2,000 Civil War soldiers buried there. This was very important because it was the first time that people had the ability to honor those who died in the armed forces with others. We celebrate this holiday known as Memorial Day to remember those who have passed that fought hard. On Memorial Day, we will remember those who will for now and forever be remembered as America's heroes. So yes, we celebrate Memorial Day in honor of America's soldiers. Thank you. 
All right, and the cover, uh, the winner of the cover contest for our booklet, and we chose this out of several entries that were given to us. It's Avery Alves of Turkey Hill School. Uh, everyone who is an, uh, has been an honored veteran in past ceremonies to, to stand, or anyone who's been a veteran to stand. I now call on uh, Lou Merritt, commander, commander of the American Legion Post 127, for the general orders. Uh, thank you, Kevin, and thank you all for coming today. In particular, the committee and our town and all the people here today are stopping in their lives to say thank you for those who serve. Service in our nation is like Christ said. Love thy neighbor. When you serve, you're putting your nation and your community and your family ahead of yourself. And we all say thank you for that. One last thing, many eloquent words have been said about the conflicts and stuff that we've done in the past. We are currently facing a, a war today, started over a year ago, against an unseen enemy, this virus. And I want to thank all those on the front line, not just our Army, logistics, our National Guard, but all of our first responders, firemen, EMTs, our police, the nurses, the doctors, who all wear a different uniform. They too serve us. And in this battle, we have lost many. And with that, I wish to add them to the role of honor, of serving and loving others more than themselves. With that, the general orders are as follows. Unfortunately, with the rain, the parade has been canceled. But we're here together to honor our fallen. At the, the uh, luncheon at the end of the parade that we normally host at the American Legion has also been canceled. But you're all invited to join us Wednesday night. We hold a uh, casual social dinner. Come and meet the veterans of your community. All of our community are welcome to join with us to break bread and tell stories and enjoy life that those who have fallen before us have made possible. And with that, we will start with our memorial service. Chaplain Tony Monaco, front and center. Chaplain, read our prayer. Please rise and cover. <coughs> Let's pray. Lord, we give. Oh Lord, we give thanks for the American 
way of life that we enjoy today, let us not forget that the rights and privilege we enjoy have blood on them and that every good gift was brought and paid for in human sacrifice. Today we honor all those who have gone before us and made the supreme sacrifice. We are ever grateful for those who are no, serving our country in every part of this world as they are your instrument of peace and freedom. We pray for the families who love ones have given their last full measure of devotion. Their very lives for people who now have the freedom in their homeland. Amen. Amen. Cover. Thank you, Chaplain. And now, Anna May, the President of the American Legion of Jury, will place the wreath before the podium in remembrance of those who we cherish today in our hearts and minds. Thank you. And now we will salute the dead. Present the colors. Two, post the colors. You may be seated. We will now um, read the names of the residents of Orange who served in the military and died between May 2019 and May 2021. Also included are members of the American Legion Post 127. Thomas Astell, Martin Avrosh, John Banks Jr., Donald Bober, Anthony Bonacci, Myron Broshinsky. August Brozek Sr., Jean Cacavalli, Thomas Cavalier, Harvey Cedarbaum, Robert Champlain, Champagne, Jay Cooper, Fernando D'Angelo, Fred Del Percio, Vito DeVito, Francis DeDia, Thomas Doyle, Edward Dunn, Richard DuPont, Louis Esposito, 
Paul Fonan Sr., Francis Fuhrer, Severio Bob Fodero, John Fry, Robert Hedman, Bruce Hoffman, William Hummel, Anthony Yaccarino, Peter Jatlow, James Jaworski Jr., Jacob Cannell, Louis Kishel, Gary Kuhachik, David Lane, Anthony Laudano, John Lewis, Leo Lieberman, Harry Lindsay, Dominic Libby, William Luciano, Thomas C. McAllister, Jr., Kenneth Martino, Robert McCarthy, Edmund Mikowski, Jr., Carl Miller, Jr., Mario Mochia, Lance Mongi, Alan Mushin, Farnaz Nafaria, Dr. Peter Naiman, Donald Nielsen, Michael Novella, Raymond O'Connor, Dorothy Oliwa, John Parker, Sperry Paracos, Philip Pelletier, Jr., Elfo Paul, Patrick Powers, Harold Pressman, Edmund Reed, Jr., Robert J. Romano, Frank Rossetti, Carl Sands, Richard Schneier, Robert Shaw, Richard Cherami, Americo Spaziani, Raymond Squires, Lee Stevens, Robert Swirsky, G. Thomas Valerio, Andrew Vargo, William Wallace, Richard Wright, Frank Zold. Thank you. Um, I'd just like to thank um, Kevin Gilbert and Kelly Martino, who are the Memorial Day coordinators, for putting together um, our plans for a parade and this ceremony. Um, uh, I can honestly say, and I know I'm going to embarrass Kelly, but she's the most organized person. I've ever met in my life. <laughs> and it was frightening. Uh, whatever we thought should happen had already happened. Um, she just was right on top of things. And we appreciate that. And it made a r very big difference. Thank you. <laughs> well, I guess. Since we're not having a parade, I don't have to announce all of that, so we're done, right? Okay, thank you for coming. Um, Who's gonna give it? Yeah, Antoinette Hodgins gonna give the closing um, remarks. You're forgiven. <laughs> Good morning. I'm going to make a brief. We love our country, so we think, thank it back. We cherish our freedom, so we thank it back. See, you defended our liberty. Thank you. Once again, thanks for coming. See you.